Hi, welcome to our Worship for Pentecost. And we've broken with tradition this week because we've moved from the back garden into the front garden. Some prayers as we begin. At the end of each sentence, we all say together the words, Fill us, Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Fill us, Holy Spirit. When the doors are closed and we are afraid to move, fill us, Holy Spirit. When we are weak and unable to act, fill us, Holy Spirit. When we are hesitant and unable to speak, fill us, Holy Spirit. When we lack energy and are unable to cope, fill us, Holy Spirit, that we may go out in your power, fill us, Holy Spirit, that we may live and work for you, fill us, Holy Spirit, that we may be part of your mission, fill us, Holy Spirit, Amen. So, the reading for Pentecost from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there was saying... <laughs> to excuse us for a moment, there's another dog going by. Now... <laughs> now there was saying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthian, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God. Pentecost is the festival many Christians wish we didn't have. What's all this about a rushing wind, tongues of fire, and suddenly speaking in other languages? 
add to that memories of the authorised version of the Bible, referring not to the Holy Spirit, but to the Holy Ghost. And it's no wonder that some Christians get weirded out by Pentecost. Now I want to cut through that today and look at the meaning of Pentecost. Before I get to the big themes though, do know that this is not a time for all those highly literal old paintings that showed physical tongues of fire resting on the disciples' heads. Luke, the writer of Acts, is struggling for language to describe a powerful and mysterious event. He refers, did you notice, to a, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. And he says they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. Struggling for language. What are the big themes of Pentecost? Because when you know them, you don't need to be spooked by it. Three of them. Firstly, some Jews used Pentecost to celebrate the covenant God made after the flood with Noah. It was the sign that God would not wreak destruction on the world in the same way again. With the visible sign of the rainbow, it was a covenant sign assuring those in covenant with God of his love. Now how have Christians said we can be sure of that love? Catholics have pointed to the sacraments. These are the places where God feeds us just as a parent shows love for a child by giving them food. The Reformed tradition has pointed to the promises of Scripture. Just as I knew my parents' love for me when I was away at college through the weekly letter my mum wrote to me, so the Bible is our letter from home. John Wesley pointed people to Romans chapter 5, where Paul says the presence of the Holy Spirit is an assurance of God's love for us. When I came home from college, Mum didn't need to write one of those letters to me. She threw her arms around me. And the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is, if you like, the divine hug. Of course, in the present pandemic, many people are missing that hug from loved ones. But you don't have to miss out on the hug from your Heavenly Father. Because he sends the Holy Spirit to make his love known in our lives. Secondly, we know Jews used Pentecost to mark God's giving of the law to Moses and Israel at Mount Sinai. But as we also know, Israel regularly broke the law of God. And if we're honest, we do too. We don't have the ability to meet his standards, and those standards are even higher in the teaching of Jesus than the Old Testament. Perhaps we feel like the Israelites in Egypt who found the cruel Pharaoh requiring them to make bricks without straw. But you know, God isn't like that cruel Pharaoh. In the prophet Jeremiah, he spoke of his new covenant, where the law would not be written on tablets of stone, but written on people's hearts. And we learn in the New Testament that the Holy Spirit dwells in the hearts of those who believe. So not only do we receive forgiveness by the grace of God when we repent and believe in Christ, God also gives us his spirit within and thus equips us to do his will. Many of you know that my wife Debbie works for Surrey County Council and she's largely been working from home since lockdown began. At first, all the council could find for her to do her work was an ancient laptop that felt like it had been used by Fred Flintstone. Her work was slow, unproductive and frustrating. But a week ago, the council managed to give her a new laptop with the specifications needed for her work. Suddenly, she can do her job much better. And she's happier. And if you heard that, she said, she's happier. It is such a relief. And what we mark today 
is that when God gives us the Holy Spirit, He is giving us the tools for the job. The job of being a disciple of Jesus. And then finally, Pentecost marks the Old Testament Feast of Weeks that we find in books like Exodus and Numbers. It was the first of two, yes, two, harvest festivals that they celebrated each year. The second one, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, was closer to the kind of harvest festival that Western churches have celebrated these past couple of hundred years, marking the final ingathering of the harvest at the end of the summer. But this first one, the Feast of Weeks, was the festival of the first fruits. And that image of first fruits is also picked up in the New Testament as a way of speaking about how God's coming kingdom is already appearing even in the midst of the present ungodly age. Most notably, Jesus' resurrection is described as the first fruits from the dead in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, at the festival of first fruits with new physical fruit ripening around them, the Holy Spirit equips the disciples to go into the world and see the first spiritual fruits of the Kingdom of God as people respond to the Gospel. For the regular sign in the Acts of the Apostles that people are filled with the Holy Spirit is that in one form or another they speak boldly for Jesus. And if we are concerned about speaking up for Christ in our day and surely we should be, then our prayer should surely be that we too are filled with the Holy Spirit. In conclusion, a story. Last Thursday evening, <laughs> Debbie and I... <laughs> sorry, Sheldon's just following a neighbour down the road. Um, but this is a story about him to conclude with, actually. On, on Thursday evening, Debbie and I were out walking him in a local park when the clap for carers began. Now, the clapping didn't bother him. He's heard that every week for ten weeks and rather thinks that it's for him anyway. But he was spooked by the sound of someone repeatedly banging a gong. He ran off and drew comfort from leaning against the legs of a stranger. Now don't be afraid of the unknown like Sheldon was. Instead, embrace the assurance of God's love for you that the presence of the Holy Spirit brings. Welcome the power the Holy Spirit gives you to live more like Jesus than you think you can. And go with the flow of the Spirit into the world to speak courageously for Christ. Amen. Some more prayers. At the end of each line, I say, we all say together, come renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, come renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless, come renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, making strong the weak, come renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, giving talents to your people, come renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture, Come, renew the face of the earth. Holy
know that we record this and Sheldon's two worst enemies go past. I can't believe it. Holy Spirit filling all things. Come renew the face of the earth. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so to a blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and power in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and make you a blessing wherever you go. Amen. Well, as usual, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to follow these videos. But I'm hoping we might just have a little bit of time on the end of the video to move the camera around and show you a little bit of the front of the house and a bit more of the front garden. So De Debbie's just going to move the camera around slowly. And then the garden, because I've spent a lot of time with this. So you can see some of Debbie's handiwork in the garden. Okay, so thank you and see you soon. Bye-bye.